my share I give up no more chance my pride is over Are you there today? Maybe you are not very rich, but even the little you have, you got them in fraudulent ways. How then do you hope to make heaven at last? Or maybe you have not got it, but you are running after it. Because of it, you will not study your Bible, you will not pray, you will not seek the Lord, you will not fellowship with the people of God. Uh, Sunday, you are in a place of work. Sunday, Saturday night, you are there. Every time you are there, man must eat. I must make something in this life. I don't care whether salvation is gone or sanctification is not there. I must make something by all means. Listen to the word of God in First Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, reading there from verse, uh, from verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. The people that say, I must make it this year. I must become a millionaire. Others have done it, I must do it. Whatever it will take, I, if I need to sink my whole life into it, whatever I will lose, I don't mind. I can't be a worker now. I can't be talking about church now. Let religion go aside now. I must be rich by all means. They that will be rich fall into temptation and into a snare and into many foolish and hurtful laws which drown men in destruction. 
destruction and perdition for the love of money is the root of all evil. You see, if you love money so much and you are running after you want it at all costs, you will do evil things. Because the thing will cover your eyes, you will say, I will repent later. I want to get it now. I will come back to church later. I know it is not right, but when I finish my program, my project, and I get everything, then if I need to, in fact, I'll bring a percentage of it to the church. The love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows you are not piercing other people you are piercing yourself you are destroying yourself in second peter second peter chapter 2 reading from verse 15 here we're told the life of a covetous man he was religious before in fact he was a prophet of god before but eventually because of money he couldn't take his stand and running after money eventually he became a false prophet and eventually he died a sinner's death and now right now as we're talking is in hellfire in second peter chapter 2 verse 15 which are forsaken the right way and are gone away following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozom, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Are you there? Do you love the wages of unrighteousness? You know in your conscience, your conscience is telling you, you are a Christian, that cannot be right. You cannot be doing this. This kind of work is destroying the lives of other people. You say, I don't care for that now. If somebody is thinking about holiness and righteousness, he will not get make ends meet in this life. But you see, we're told about uh, this uh, Balaam. He loved the wages of unrighteousness, but he was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass, speaking with man's voice, forbid, uh, forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, and then to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. I pray the Lord will deliver every one of us in Jesus' name. That such a thing will not be your Lord. That such a thing will not be uh, your possession in Jesus' name. Now, if you come back to James chapter 5, you will see that James was rebuking these wicked rich people for two things. Number one, for their wickedness. Number two, for their foolishness. On the one hand, their wickedness. It said in uh, verse uh, 3 there, it says, Your gold and your silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. Ye have, in the last part, ye have heaped up treasure together. He said, isn't that wicked? There are many poor people around you, many hungry people around you, many jobless people around you, and you are heaping it up, and you are hoarding it, and you are storing it up. And while you are storing it up, the people are dying of hunger around you. He said, that is wickedness. And if any of us, if we're doing like that today, that is wickedness on our part. But then he also tells us, it's also foolish because it says in the latter part of that verse 3 it says it is for the last days how foolish that when their time on earth was almost gone they kept the riches that will soon be useless to them in the grave that's why they were sharply rebuked for, for storing them up without regard for God's timetable. They were about to leave this world, and yet all the things were there. They were not making use of them. If you are a Christian, and you say that you are born again, you have the riches there, you have everything. You are not spending them. You are just keeping them in a bank account. There is secret bank account bank account there's another bank account over there and people are perishing around you when jesus comes and the saints are taking away all the money you are keeping you are not even using for your children you are not using for members of your family you are not using for neighbors around that need your help everything will fall into the hands of the antichrist and then will you be an eternally foolish man eternally foolish woman i pray god will teach us wisdom to make use of whatever god has given us before the end of our lives in Jesus' name. And then, when you have used it in the way of the Lord, when you get to heaven, there will be great reward for every, everybody. We come now to point number three, and it's the damnation of wicked, wealthy men. The damnation of wicked, wealthy men. In James chapter 5, James chapter 5, from verse 4, it says, Behold, the hire of the laborers who have ripped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, cries. You see the, you see the thing there, that uh, they will hire people, 
And as they hire people, employed people, those people will sweat. Those people will spend their time, spend everything they have. They forsake their families in trying to work for this individual. And then at the end of the day, end of the week, end of the month, they will not pay them. That's why James descended on them with the word of God. He said they hire. That means the wages of the laborers, the employees that have reaped down your fields, that have worked for you, which of of you kept back by fraud, by deceit. Uh, you, you will be telling them lies. Uh, you, you know the condition of things now. Uh, I will pay you later. Uh, just keep on working. Three months you have not paid them. Six months you have not paid them. It's like the cries of them which have reaped, uh, which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. The word Sabaoth there is uh, the word host. It means the Lord of the hosts of angels, of myriads of angels in heaven. That Lord who is sovereign in authority over the hosts of angels, he has heard the cries of the people that are crying, the children that cannot go to school. Their wives that are dying of hunger or that are now having ulcer, terrible ulcer, because it's not because the man in the house is not working, but because the you that you pay them, you are not paying them. It says that the man is crying and the wife is crying and his children are crying. The cries are entering into the ears of the Lord of hosts. It says in verse 5, ye have lived in pleasure. The people working for you, they are living in rags. They are living their suffering and they are regretting that they are working with you. And when they want to leave you to go and work in another place, you call them, what's the matter? Are you not a Christian? Of course I will pay you. It's because of the conditions now. You brainwash them again and they still stay. And they are staying in suffering. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. And then it says, ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. That is, you are being fed, even overfed, as if that you are uh, chicken or hen or whatever it is uh, of a Greek. That they are feeding and feeding and becoming fat so that eventually it is for slaughter. It says you have condemned and killed the jaws. You have even gone to the point that you condemn them. You find a way of saying something and doing something and rope them in something so that you deny them of their right. And the man, he doesn't have money to eat. How can he have money to take lawyer? And they come against him and say, you are cheating him. And he does not resist you. That's the damnation, the condemnation of these uh, people. And as I told you, the condemnation is all over the Bible. And if, uh, if we are like that, maybe you are saying, well, thank God I'm not like that. I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. I'm a child of God. The question is, are you paying, your empl are you paying, paying the people you employed? And even if you didn't employ them, and uh, you are the person to pay, you have been given that right as your office and the place of work, are you paying them the right thing, or do they have to bribe you and give you a percentage before they receive what is their due, before they receive what really actually belongs to them? In Malachi chapter 3 verse 5, Malachi chapter 3 verse 5, it says, And I will come near to you to judgment. I will be a sweet witness against the sorcerer and against the adulterers and against the false wearers and against those that oppress the hireling in their wages. Oppress the hireling in their wages. There are many ways you can oppress a, an employee, a hireling in their wages. You may give them something that is much, much, much below their certificate. You know that this man is a graduate. He has come to work with you. And you know that he's been looking for a job a long time. And you are trying to build up a particular organization, a particular company. And uh, you want to make it in good time. Therefore, you know what they ought to receive. But you will not give them what they ought to receive. You are Press the hireling, you oppress the employee in his wages, and the widow and the fatherless that turn aside the stranger from his right. And uh, fear me not, says the Lord of hosts. He says, if we're doing that, you may profess I'm born again. You may profess I'm sanctified. You may profess I'm a child of God. You do not know the Lord. If you're oppressing the people that are working with you, you are cheating them. In Gen Jeremiah chapter 22. Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 13. Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness. Take note of that. Uh, I want to build a house. Um, I want to get land. I want to get this. Therefore, you are not considering other people. 
Uh, it's good you build a house. There's nothing wrong in that. It's good you get land. There's nothing wrong in that. It's good you live conveniently. There's nothing wrong in that. But if you do it to oppress other people, to cheat other people, to destroy other people, that's when it is wrong. Warn to him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong, that useth his neighbor's service without wages. Be thinking about yourself now. If you're using the service of other people and there are no wages and giveth him not for his work. Giveth him not. You don't give them what is appropriate for the work they are doing. That said, I will build me a wide house and large chambers and, uh, and uh, cutteth uh, him out windows and it is sealed with cedar and painted with vermilion. And shall thou reign because thou closest thyself in cedar? Did not thy father eat and drink and do justice and judgment and justice? And then it was well with him. He judged the cause of the poor and the needy. And then it was well with him. Was not this to know me, says the Lord, but thine eyes and thine heart, and not but for thy covetousness, and for to shed innocent blood, and oppression, and violence, and to do it. And this is telling us the condemnation of the judgment that rests upon the people, that can cheat other people, oppress other people, and they will not bat an eye. They don't have any feeling for the suffering of other people. In Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 27. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they have become great and waxing rich. You see them, they are becoming rich. They may tell you, oh, it's the prosperity of the Lord, it's a blessing of... No, it's not the blessing of the Lord. Many of the people that are going to some of these churches and they are talking about prosperity, prosperity, they do a lot of things to cheat other people, to oppress other people so that they can be rich. And eventually, if they have a little bit of the riches of this world, they will say, it's, it's because we're living by faith. No, you're living by fraud. You're living by oppressing other people. That's not how God blesses people. If you are going to be blessed of God indeed, you will do the right thing for the people that are walking with you. It says, as a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they have become great and waxing rich. It says, they are waxing fat, they shine, yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They even go beyond the wicked people. They judge not because the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. And the right of the needy, they have not uh, uh, they, they judge not. Shall I not visit for these things, says the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? It's telling us that even if the whole nation is doing it, judgment will still come. You know why some people are practicing this bad evil things? They say, I'm not the only one. Everybody is doing it. And if everybody is doing it, is God going to bring judgment upon everybody? Oh, yes. If the whole nation is doing bad, bad things, the Lord will bring judgment upon everybody. Therefore, if you really want to have the blessing of the Lord, you will separate yourself from uh, those uh, evil practices. Sephaniah chapter 1. Sephaniah chapter 1, verse 18. It says, Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. It's talking about these people that will be condemned, that will be damned, that the judgment of God will come upon. Their silver, their gold will not be able to de deliver them in the day of judgment. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. He will get rid of the people that are doing evil. As we have studied all these things tonight, you want to think about yourself. You want to think about the work you are doing. You want, how are you getting your own riches? How are you getting what uh, you say you have? Are you getting it in good ways? Or are you getting it in fraudulent manners? Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ himself told us in Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. He said, for what shall it profit a man? If he shall gain the whole world, if it were possible for you to get all the money in this whole state, all the money in this uh, whole nation, even if it were possible for you to gain the whole world, if you lose your soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And then Jesus Christ told us the story of a man. He was rich, rich in material things, rich in earthly things, but he was not rich in, uh, in faith, rich in mercy. He was not rich in love. 
God. He was not rich in doing good to other people. In Luke chapter 16, reading from verse 19, here is a story, not a parable, because in a parable, you don't give the name of a person in a parable. When you give the name of a person, you are telling a story. He told this story in Luke chapter 16, verse 19. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and feared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of souls, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his souls, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by, carried by who? by the angels into Abraham's bosom. If you are a child of God, I don't mind whatever may be happening in the world now. If you die, the angels will carry you to Abraham's bosom. And if you don't die and Jesus Christ comes, uh, comes back in the rapture, he will take us with him in Jesus' name. And eventually in that verse 22, the rich man also died. They think they'll never die. They think they'll be there forever. They think that they're going to enjoy all the riches forever. And they think that the thing is there for them to spend. And they'll be spending almost for eternity and they will not do good with the money that they have but eventually the rich man also died and he was buried and in hell he lift up his eyes being in torment and seeth Abraham afar off, afar off he was not able to get there and uh, I pray for you, you will, this will not be your Lord in Jesus name and then he saw Abraham he saw Lazarus in his bosom and he cried, didn't James tell us they will cry, they will cry they will weep, they will mourn and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. He was tormented in that flame. That was hellfire. And once he got there, there is no way he will ever come out again. My prayers that we will never get there in Jesus' name. And Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which will pass from hence unto you cannot, neither... And they pass to us that will come from thence. He said, where you are now, that is fixed, that is final. There is no way you can leave that place and come over here. And there is no way anybody can leave here and come to the other side. Therefore, you are there, you are there forever. We still have the chance. This is the time we can pray to the Lord. This is the time we can repent of any wickedness in our hand, any oppression in our hand. If we are afflicting other people, cheating other people, if we are fraudulent, this is the time we can make amends and we can make restitutions now. We can go back to our places of work and go back to our neighbors and tell those poor people, I'm sorry, I offended you, I cheated you. You calculate everything that you got away from them unlawfully and you give unto them. Then you tell them to forgive you, you tell the Lord to forgive you and then your name will be in the book of life and if you close your eyes on earth here, you'll open your eyes in the presence of the Lord Almighty. I pray that will be your Lord in Jesus' name. Why don't you rise up and say, Lord, in this single life that I have to live, you will help me. I will not oppress the poor. I will not cheat the poor. I will not give bribe. I will not steal. I will not be fraudulent. I will think about other people. I will think about my employees. I will think of the people that are working with me and working for me. I will think of their good. I will think of their convenience. I will think of their prosperity. I will not be selfishly thinking about my prosperity alone, about my convenience alone, about my possession alone. I will think about their children. I will think about their wives. I will think about their husband. I will think about their relatives that depend upon them. And I will not allow their wages to stick to my hand so I can enrich myself. Make me kind. Make me loving. Make me considerate. Make me just so that I will do the right thing towards the people that are working with me and working for me. And if you are the one paying people in your place of work, you will not take any percentage. You will not cheat anybody. They have worked for that money. You give everything to them whole. Let us pray that God will give us the grace. We'll behave the way we ought to behave. We'll be just and kind and loving to people. And then when the trumpet shall sound, because we are saved and because we have the holiness of God in us, we shall be there on that final day. Pray that the Lord will help you. He will help you so that on the final day, you'll get to heaven, you will not go to hell.